Hi friends, let us today understand how to apply impulse invariance method on a given problem. So the problem for today is given as h a of s equals to s plus 0.1 divided by s plus 0.1 square plus 9. Here they have not mentioned anything about sampling period. So we will keep the sampling period as t. Let us go ahead and solve this problem. Now for solution of this problem. What I need to do is I will get h a of s from h a of s I will derive h of t from h of t I will do I will derive h of n t s and from there I will derive my h of z again from h a of s to h a of t is Laplace inverse Laplace transform from h of t to h of n t s is sampling and from h of n t s to h of z is z transform. So I will apply these three basic steps and we will obtain the answer. Let us go with the first uh, step. So now in step one, I will apply inverse Laplace transform. So here I will write this as H A of S equals to S plus 0.1 divided by S plus 0.1 the whole square plus nine. Now I cannot apply my inverse Laplace transform to this given problem. So what I need to do is I need to bifurcate this uh, system. So to bifurcate it, I will write it like this S plus 0.1 divided by, I can write it as S plus 0.1, okay, minus J into three and S plus 0.1 minus, okay, so plus J into three. So what we have? We have two terms in which I write this as A and this term as B. Again, this term is A and this term is B. So we have AB, AB terms. So we have A square minus B square, but J square is minus one. So you'll perfectly get this term. So just to recall, this is my A square minus b square form but as my b is an imaginary term i will have a square minus j b square j b the whole square so i can write it as a square minus j square b square now j square itself is minus one so i'll get a square plus b square so with this basic fundamental knowledge i can write this as a this becomes my a and this becomes my b so a square minus i want a square plus b square as a result but i will fundamentally use as a square minus j square b square so with that aspect i have divided this into a plus b into a minus b now when you have divided it now let us go to find using partial fraction so my h a of s which is nothing but s plus 0.1 divided by s plus 0.1 uh, minus 3j into s plus 0.1 plus 3j that is equal to a upon let's say this quantity to be p1 and this quantity to be p2 so a upon p1 plus b upon p2 okay now to find a I will put s plus 0.1 minus 3j into h a of s at s is equal to now taking all the on the other side becomes minus 0.1 plus j uh, 3 or 3j that a will be equal to 1 by 2 okay how to do that now this value this product will cancel this p1 and you will get only p2 so just a uh, rough work i will have s value as minus 0.1 plus 3j plus 0.1 divided by okay down i will have this as um, s as minus 0.1 plus 3j plus 0.1 plus 3j right so 0 0.1, 0 0.1 will cancel from here, 0 0.1, 0 0.1 will cancel from here and here you will get 3j and here you will get divided by 3 plus 3, 6j. So jj will get cancelled and here you will get 1 by 2. So it is 1 of over 2. That is what the 
required answer is all about okay now let us go ahead and find what is b so for b i will have s plus 0.1 plus 3j into h a of s at s equals to 0.1 minus 3j uh, minus 0.1 minus 3j because here 1 is 0.1 is uh, with the plus sign so it will be minus 3j is also with plus sign that is also minus so minus 0.1 minus 3j now uh, what i'll do is b will also be 1 by 2 with this funda and you can do the rough work and the rough work is uh, uh, as i will cancel uh, this term then only p1 remains with s as minus 0.1 uh, minus uh, 3j with plus 0.1 divided by i will have this term so it will be minus 0.1 minus 3j uh, plus 0.1 minus 3j so uh, plus 0.1 minus 0.1 will get cancelled in the numerator and denominator this minus uh, will be minus 6j so that will come as 1 by 2 so that is how we solve the uh, second coefficient also so now i received a and b i'll just put it and make the h a of s to be in the proper format so h a of s will be nothing but h a of s will be equal to a is 1 by 2 so i'll write 1 by 2 divided by the p1 value is s plus 0.1 minus 3j plus b value is also 1 by 2 divided by s uh, uh, plus 0.1 uh, plus 3j okay so this is what the value for h a of a is now let us go to step 2 and apply inverse Laplace transform. Uh, so let's say step 1 only because we have not finished with yet with step 1. So in step 1 itself I am going to apply my inverse Laplace transform and I am going to obtain h of t. Now h of t the co constant will come out this one by 2 and it will be 1 upon 1 uh, plus a. So that 1 upon 1 plus a will be uh, 1 upon s plus a will be e raised to plus heto it will be minus okay so let us keep this like this so that it becomes a total of uh, mm, a so 1 upon s plus a will be minus okay 0 0.1 minus 3j okay uh, into t mine uh, plus uh, 1 by 2 i have taken common so this becomes e raised to uh, minus 0 0.1 plus 3j into t and the whole multiplied by u of t because this alone will have a u of t this will have an u of t and i'll get this now step 2 i'll go which is sampling now with sampling i will have h of n t s which is equal to 1 by 2 e raised to minus 0 0.1 minus 3 j into n t s minus sorry plus e raised to minus 0 0.1 plus 3 j into n t s this is small t n t s into u of n t s so that is how we uh, have received uh, our h of nts now i will go for the last step that is applying the z transform so let us apply z transform in step 3 so in step 3 apply z transform so when i apply z transform i'm going to get h of z which is equal to okay summation n going from minus infinity to plus infinity h of n t s z raised to minus n that is equal to if i'm going from minus uh, uh, i'm putting the function now so my n will be restricted from 0 to infinity because i have u of n t s uh, which is equal to half into e raised to minus 0.1 minus 3 j t s into n minus plus e raised to minus 0.1 plus 3 j 
into n t s the whole raised to z minus n. Now with this, uh, I will go ahead and we will uh, put one by two outside, taking z of n with each term and uh, splitting the summation. So I will have one by two, then. I will have first summation going with the first term. So it becomes n is equal to 0 to infinity e raised to minus 0 0.1 minus 3j n t s into z raised to minus n plus summation n is going from 0 to infinity e raised to minus 0 0.1 plus 3j into n t s and z raised to minus n so this is now individually i got this terms now uh, again adjusting the n and applying one upon uh, a raised to n uh, if, uh, sorry one upon one minus a uh, series formula to this term and to this term and then we will get a complex term which is one upon two into i i'm going to get one upon one minus now it is it will be e raised to okay uh, minus t into point one minus three j into z raised to minus one plus okay one upon one minus e raised to minus t into point one plus three j to z raised to minus 1. Now, what you have to do is, you have to cross multiply, okay, you will get a very huge term in the numerator, huge term addition in the numerator, product in the denominator, multiplying that two and bringing everything in terms of cos and sines, that will actually uh, be a tedious task. So let us do that, okay, but I will not solve all the steps in between. I will skip some. So let us take the terms in the numerator. So we get e raised to minus t into 0.1 plus 3j. Okay, then z raised to minus 1 plus uh, bringing the other side term will give me 1 minus e raised to minus t into 0.1 plus minus 3j okay divided by i will get 1 minus e raised to minus t into 0.1 minus 3j uh, yeah 3j into z raised to minus 1 into 1 minus e raised to minus t into uh, 0.1 plus 3j into z raised to minus 1 now we can see over here that plus 1 minus 1 gets cancelled or uh, here we have z raised to minus 1 term you can pull out z raised to minus 1 term from here and you will get inner term this one so i will have 1 by 2 and uh, let us pull out uh, minus z inverse outside because both are minuses so we can put that minus sign common out okay and then <coughs> yeah we can put z inverse common and then here i'm going to get e raised to uh, let's write the terms such that uh, we don't need to actually adjust too many things so i have e raised to uh, j theta minus e raised to minus j theta right but here there is a problem so that i'll sort it so it becomes e raised to minus t into 0.1 plus 3j right and uh, yeah 3j and then we have min, uh, plus now because i have taken out minus e raised to uh, let's say this becomes e raised to uh, minus t again into 0.1 minus 3j right this is what my numerator term is and then i have the whole denominator term which is 1 minus e raised to minus t into 0.1 minus 3j z inverse into 1 minus e raised to minus t 
into 0.1 plus 3j into z raised to minus 1. Okay, now let's do further calculations. What I'll do is I'll open up the uh, brackets and I will have 1 by 2. Here I will have minus z inverse into this will give me e raised to minus 0.1t okay into e raised to uh, minus 3j t plus e raised to minus 0.1t into e raised to minus of minus is plus 3j t right and then the whole denominator part again pulling out e raised to minus 0.1 common this will be cos with this 2 okay doing such huge calculation you will end up getting 1 minus e raised to minus 0.1 t into cos 3 t into z inverse divided by 1 minus 2 e raised to minus 0.1 t into cos of 3 t into z inverse plus e raised to minus 0.2 t into z raised to minus 1. So this will be your h of z ultimately when you will solve the numerator and the denominator of the given problem okay so uh, huge number of calculations are required into between this and this step i have just shown you a sample that how i have adjusted the cost in the numerator so this term will be ending up getting this term uh, whichever i have derived so far so this is how we actually uh, uh, adjust the denominator product also and we get the finally this answer. Thank you.